Hello, this is Oliver Blair from Massey University and we're going to be showing you how to take a model from SketchUp, export it as an STL and then import it into 123D Make where you can then um, generate a cutting file and cut out your 3D object out of, for example, uh, cardboard like we've done here with this model. So the first thing you need to do is um, I guess download all the software, download SketchUp so we can get SketchUp for free just do a search on it, download SketchUp, and then there's a version of SketchUp for free called uh, SketchUp Make. So you can download load that. And then after that, you need to get a plugin for it. So that plugin is called um, STL SketchUp. So you can just do a search for that. And then in the extension warehouse, <coughs> you'll find it. You can download it. So you will need to log in to the extension warehouse and then you can click on download and that will download a little, it's called an RBZ file and then what you need to do is open up SketchUp like I've got here and then click on the SketchUp menu go to preferences and then extensions and then there's a little button down here in the bottom right install, install extension and you just click on that and then open it and click OK, yep, yes, OK, and then it'll show up here. There it is, STL Import and Export. And what that does is um, just adds this menu entry to the file menu. Um, export STL, it says right there. OK, so now we need a model. So I'm just going to quickly make a test model. So I'm just going to make something that's a small little cube. So roughly something about 200 by 200 and then maybe uh, 100 high so a little wee, a wee test one cool and then so when you click file and then export STL you can kind of see here there's um, this dialog pops up there's a checkbox export selected geometry only so we didn't have anything selected so if we do this um, you know we'll generate a model with nothing in it basically so if we uncheck that and we go export I'll save it to the desktop as um, test now. Cool, that should have worked. So let's now open up 123D Make. Here we are. Here's what it looks like to begin with. It's just a one button import. And then we can go test 2 STL. You can sort of see all the STL files are um, available. These SKP files and everything else is unavailable. So it only takes STL or OBJ files. So that's why the plugin to export. Okay, so yep, open. Cool. There's our model. So how it works with Make to navigate the model, you can kind of um, move it around like that, or you can click on this um, navigational cube thing up here and like drag it around as well to have a look. It's very kind of uh, I guess object orientated, so you can't sort of get inside this very easily but that's fine because we're just cutting out little models great so now what we want to do is sort of figure out a way of you know slicing this up so that we can maybe laser cut something or um, you know chop chop up some material on the plywood uh, on the CNC router on the shop bot in the fab lab maybe something like that so you can sort of see there's some manufacturing settings click on this this is kind of our um, our sheet size or our bed size. So if we're thinking about the laser cutter, that's 600 wide by 400 deep, and you know that the laser cutter in the Fab Labs a bit bigger. I think it's 1200 wide, and then the shop bot's even bigger than that. So you sort of need to know what you're working towards. So let's go custom, and let's go change the units to millimeters. And we'll go. Ah, so for custom, you need to click on that little thing there. Units. Let's add a new preset. We'll call this um, workshop laser bed. And we'll change the units to millimeters. And we'll say the height is going to be uh, 400. 
the length will be 600 and the thickness of our material so let's say it's going to be a 4 mil card or something like that all right great done cool so now that preset should be there workshop laser bed great and so what these are, are these units are about our object size so if we want to you know shrink or grow the the model so we can go original size and that will be whatever size that we modeled it in SketchUp so we'll see here 200 by 200 by 100 which is good so original size and then now this is the fun part so we can sort of figure out you know how we want to chop up our model stack slices a bit boring for this cube so that's just a whole bunch of squares that are the same size and then interlock slices this is where it starts to get a bit more interesting you can sort of see you know, how it's going to chop up your model and how it's going to be constructed this is, these are kind of slots so when the laser cutter cuts it out it's going to cut these slots out of your material so you can slot it all together so it's pretty cool it sort of figures this all out for you curves you can actually change the um, axes of these as well uh, how do we do that? Slice direction, that's what it is. So click on slice direction and I can rotate these around. Um, hold on. Slice direction. Hmm. It's not working for some reason. Anyway, radial slices, pretty cool. Folded panels. So this is um, like it would cut it out of one piece of material and then you sort of fold that material up. Pretty cool. And you can even have the join types, so diamonds or like tabs. You can sort of see here the little little tabs. So you'd sort of glue that and then stick them together. Pretty cool. 3D slices. Okay, great. So let's make a more complex model and then export it as an STL, bring it in and see what it looks like. Alright, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a simple kind of shape and then kind of play around with it a bit. So I've got another plugin installed, um, it's called 3D Shapes, and I can just generate, for example, a torus. And I'll say, um, sh yep, let's just make it that big. And it's tiny. So I'll zoom into it. You can sort of see it's like this little ring donut. And um, so I can just you know scale it up. Maybe a little bit like that. Or um, I can even make it you know a bit taller like this. And then maybe um, what I want to do is sort of grab part of it and make it a bit sort of sort of strange. So I'll just right click soften and smooth edges see right now it's kind of like it's doing this sort of fake softening on it so if i right click and go soft and smooth and um just crank this all the way down see how it was up like here or something crank it all the way down now you can see actually what all the different faces that it's made up of so this is what 1 2 3d makes going to see as well so what i'll do i'll just sort of select this part Maybe select a few faces and maybe pull them out a bit. So now we have this sort of weird abstracted kind of, kind of shape. And maybe um, maybe I'll just pull some of the the corners out. Maybe just scale this up. Let me scale this here part. Maybe just scale it in a wee bit. So this is kind of weird faceted kind of form. We're not going to work, so I might maybe move this up, up and over or something. Maybe this needs to come down as well. Yeah, I'll just sort of play around grabbing bits of it. Maybe even um, I might sort of select some of the faces, maybe this one. And uh, uh, if I hold down Alt, this one, this one this one this one just sort of I'm just playing around here 
probably going to be kind of ugly. So I've got some faces selected and um, I'll use that random uh, extrude plugin that we made. Uh, let's go one uh, ten. Well, let's just see what that does. Oh, okay. It's kind of interesting. <coughs> All right, cool. Let's let's see what this does. So let's uh, just export it. Um, yeah, export everything. Export um, you know T seventeen or whatever we're up to. Cool. Uh, where's make make? Here we go. And I'll just go import these domes or something else I was working on testing out stuff T17 <coughs> is it going to crash it? no! oh cool great so I can sort of zoom in so right now we're on the, the folded panels construction technique and you can sort of see all the red parts it doesn't really like too much it doesn't really want to do it because of the settings we've got and because of the model and because of the, the construction technique Interestingly, it likes the blue parts, which is kind of cool. But these parts are a bit too big or something for it. So we can, um, you know, change the vertex count and see if that changes anything. What well, that means is it's going to be more detailed, so it's going to abstract it less. You can kind of see really well on this uh, this piece here that's sticking out. It's abstracted it like it hasn't it hasn't made this it, it normal. How we, how we actually modeled it. So if we go up enough, it should make it a bit better or not. Seems to be getting worse and worse now. That looks quite cool anyway, all red like that. <coughs> so probably what I'm trying to show you here is the fold folded models technique isn't going to be the best for this model. So let's try stacked slices. What does that do? All right, cool. So let's have a look object size. Uh, let's go original. See what that changes. Okay. <coughs> so now the whole thing's, you know, almost 300 by 400 wide at its widest point. This is a big sort of chunky model. And you can kind of see like these bits that are overhanging. They're going to be a bit weird. They're going to sort of be a bit funny. But you can see in this, uh, in, yeah, you can't even see in this view on the cutting sheets that those overhanging bits are not even connected to the, the layers that are on the inside. So, what we want to do maybe is um, <coughs> let's change our material thickness. And I think we can do that. In the manufacturing settings, yes, yeah, uh, material thickness here, so we can. There's an apply button somewhere. I'm pretty sure of it. Yeah, you can sort of see like getting more and more layers. The, the thinner the material gets, as it make more and more layers, and you know conversely, if if it was say eight, oh, eight mil. Then there's less layers, they're like a lot thicker. <coughs> so keep that in mind as well when you're when you're um, printing your stuff out. Also, there's slice direction, and we should be able to change this now. So if I just drag this around, here we go. See now our slices are going that way. Pretty cool. You can sort of see that reflected in this in the cutting sheets, the weird shapes that we're generating now. Oh, it's a bit sort of glitched out, but yeah. Cool. <coughs> Shape round. Okay, cool. So that's stack slice is probably gonna work quite well for that center part. That's looking kind of cool already, especially this that how it's got a sort of void in the center. Okay, cool. Now that you've um, generated your shape and you've exported it as an STL, brought it into 123D Make, and you've decided on what sort of cutting technique you're going to use, you now want to export your cutting sheet. So to do this, you need to be logged in. Um, otherwise, it won't let you export the file. So you need to log in either using your existing Autodesk account, or you can just create a new one. 
can also link it to Facebook, but I'm not sure if you want to do that or not. And you can sort of see over here on the right, there's a preview of the cutting sheets with red and blue lines. So the blue lines we can set to be cutting through all the way through our material, and the red lines we can set to just engrave our material. So it's sort of going to write on it for us. So what we want to really make sure is that your manufacturing settings are set correctly. Because if they're on a different setting, say for example A3s, it'll update and it'll generate um, a different cutting plan for us. So it's going to, what I've got it set to right now is nested. So it's going to do some computation and sort of figure out the best way to um, position all of our elements on that sheet. So you want to make sure it's set up to whatever um, you're going to be cutting on. So if you're cutting on the shop bot, that sheet size is going to be a bit bigger. And um, if you're cutting on the, the laser cutter, you need, to, you need to figure out how big your material is and then if it's going to be able to cut that. So right now I've got it set to 600 by 400, which is the 3D workshop laser. And we can get get some material from the 3D workshop and buy it that is cut to that size as well. Cool. There we go. One, two, three. So what you want to do, make sure you're um, signed in. And then you click on this little icon down here next to Get Plans. Just click on that and it'll open up the um, cutting sheet view and then we can export it. So just make sure it's set to EPS, which is great, and then export. What it'll do is it'll, it'll generate a zip file. So you can just go and um, just unzip that and then load up Illustrator. And what you want to do is you want to load up your laser template. So this is the 3D Workshop laser template Illustrator file. And then open up the uh, EPS document, select everything, copy it, just paste it into a new layer in Illustrator. And it, everything should line up if you've um if you've set everything if you've set your cutting sheets to the right size. It should fit on that artboard. Cool. So now you can save this file, take it to three workshop, load it onto that computer and you're away. You're cutting. Cheers. Thanks very much. See ya.